Alrighty then, good day. Um, in this step, we're just going to be learning how to actually physically create um, the actual website. Now, usually speaking, you're created on a local uh, your local machine and upload it to the server. You can also directly create it on the server, though. But in this instance, I'm just going to create it in uh, where all my pupils can access and work from. I'm doing this currently for the matrix of 2018, um, so I'll be creating a website there. I'm um, just going to create a new folder. I'm going to call this bacon because that's the, <laughs> the topic that we've been randomly going through. Um, so you set up a blank folder structure, and inside this folder structure, I would suggest you create a folder called images. And inside there, you would place any images you want to add uh, into the site so that they can separate your HTML files from the actual images. Now, as far as creating your HTML files, uh, you would... Um, oh, sorry, let me first go on to the images part. Uh, when we talk about images, I would suggest you don't you don't want to sit there and have this 5 megabyte image or this massively high quality image and then display it yay big on the screen. Uh, it's a waste because the, the user is going to have to download that size. You don't have any images that are too large. Um, and usually speaking, you would want it to be about the size that you're going to be displaying it at and as well as in a nice compressed format like a JPEG or a PNG or uh, blah, blah, blah. So you've got to be careful about what images you choose. Um, so I'm going to put the image there off of a record um, just now. But for now, we're going to learn two different ways of actually creating our HTML files. Now, one thing that's very important, uh, firstly, you'll notice that when I go and I create an index, dot index file, you'll see that it says it gives me the extension .txt. Now, defaultly, so all I did is I went right-click New, and I went to Text Document. And that created a new text file. I called it Index. Now, you see that there's an extension .txt. Defaultly, this is not shown. And the reason why is if you go to view in your Windows Explorer, this is I've got Windows Explorer open here, you'll notice that it says there um, under the view options, you'll see that it gives you various different options. And one of them is it asks you uh, show hidden files and, and, and folders. Sorry, here we go. This is the one I was looking for. Hide extensions for known file types. And what that means is if, if that is ticked and I apply it, you'll see there that index doesn't show .txt. The reason why is it knows that it's a text file, so it gives an icon of a text file. And there's no need to display um, what the extensions is. Um, I suggest you always untick this because it, it gives you more of an understanding of what file types you're working with all the time. Um, and it also can allow you to manipulate them. So just to go over that again, you go to your view and options. So it differs depending on your, your uh, Windows environment, but it's always view and options is something that just looks slightly different. So we're going to change this to being a .html file. And then it will ask you, are you sure you want to change the file type? It's going to be different uh, to what it was. You can just go yes, and now it will automatically be associated now with Chrome. So it's now a web page. Um, from here, you can now open it up in whatever you are editing it with. Personally, I use a, a program called NetBeans, and this is what um, my school is going to be using to work with because then it, it aids, if they use this IDE um, now, it will help them when they get to Java that they'll already be a bit more familiar with it. Um, when we take a look here, um, I just dragged and dropped it into here, and index.html is open, uh, and the file is open. You could also actually have gone to create a new file, so a file, new file, or this little icon over here. And you can then go ahead and, and choose file type and you can go to other and you'll see there's an option to create an HTML file um, uh, over here. So you could create it from the, actually within the program as well. I personally just prefer uh, creating a text document, dragging in. I don't know which is quicker, but whatever. Um, all right, so the first thing that we looked at is we looked at creating the basic uh, structure now. The HTML is over there at the beginning and at the end. There is a uh, stuff you can add before it, which tells it which type of HTML, etc, etc, etc. I'm not going to go into that in too much detail because uh, we're just doing the basics right now. Um, oh, sorry, let me add it because it does... That's a good convention. Uh, to help the... And that's just to help the browsers out and give it some information on there. And so that's an HTML5 version. Whatever. All right. So we're starting our HTML document now, so we've opened it and closed it now. You'll notice that automatically, when I created the HTML tag, uh, NetBeans automatically says, hey, I want to close it. So you just press Enter. So if, uh, just to show you that again, um, before you close the tag or create the tag, and I press that curly button, it will automatically open up the close the tag. 
option, whatever tag you've opened, I would suggest you immediately close it and put a line break between so you know that you've closed every tag you open. And that's often a mistake people make when doing HTML editing is they don't uh, close the tags or they code within tags that they shouldn't be coding within items like that. So the first thing we're going to be working with is head and your head is your uh, your properties of the page and title of the page, those kind of things. And then you're just going to create a body. Now in your guys' notes, I refer to this section as your area one. And remember, this makes a comment. Um, so I suggest you read through the notes before going into this. But this is your area one. And remember, that uh, open dash dash, that refers to a comment, meaning that it will not be displayed on the page at all. It's just for the programmer, um, whoever's coding it, to be able to see what some information is. And this would be my area two, according to my notes. Um, in there. Okay, so in area one, there's a couple of things that we learned. Um, uh, the first thing is just the fact that you've got a title, and your title can have, uh, um, it's just, I'm uh, going to call this Bacon Home, the home of Bacon. Sounds cooler. Right. Okay, so we haven't done anything yet. All I've done is I've created the, the, the title, ba Home of Bacon. But it's a good idea, um, firstly, make sure you save after every time you edit. But you might as well open it just to check what's happening as well. So I'm going to be opening it here, and you'll see um, when I open it. Oh hello! <laughs> Doesn't mean to make it that big. Uh, when I've opened it, you'll notice there that the title of it is the home of bacon. So the top here, where my mouse pointer is, it's the home of bacon, um, and that's the only thing that we've changed so far. So going back to the code, um, the next thing you would be adding is your meta tags. Now I refer to your meta tags as tags for search engines or for the properties for other programs to use or other um, internet services to use. Now, I'm not going to be um, coding those from scratch. I'm just going to copy and paste them directly from within um, from the Word document uh, that I had set up uh, just because I can. Now, actually, I want to leave these descriptions in here because I think it would help uh, So the first one is your meta tag. Now, interestingly enough, it's giving you an uh, red underline, which usually says you've done something incorrectly. It's not a recognized an XML one. Okay, so it's the commas that are actually uh, it's not liking. Hmm. I wonder how you separate your keywords in. Interesting. Nope, doesn't like that either. Yeah, and that, that's quite interesting. It's not liking the fact that I'm separating the keywords, attribute, name, keywords. Let me pause this and try to figure out uh, why it's not liking this here. Um, NetBeans is quite particular on the way it likes its HTML code, which does mean the reason why I don't use it for uh, cat pupils often. Um, they use uh, different programs because it's, they're less particular about how to code um, information on there. Uh, let me pause this. Well, you learn something every day. Um, it turns out I didn't change anything. Literally, all I did is I retyped it. And uh, the reason why that worked is obviously the characters that it uses inside Word is different. So my shortcut way of trying to do this was not cool because it, it doesn't like it. Um, it potentially could even just be that the curly brackets here it doesn't like. But yeah, no, it's a bit more than that. So it doesn't like the inverted commas, maybe. So basically here I'm just trying to find out what, what it's not liking about uh, the copying and pasting. And it turns out that what it's not liking is actually the inverted commas, maybe. No, nope, damn it. I guess it doesn't like a lot of stuff. Name is not allowed. Ah, okay, so you can't copy and paste from Word. <laughs> Note to yourself. Okay, I'll quickly type this out and then I'll uh, and pause. Okay, um, I just typed out uh, the method tags. Um, and you'll notice that I've messed up one and that was the first refresh one, because um, quite frankly, we didn't, at this particular page, we won't need to refresh. There's only certain situations you would want to refresh, and it would often be you'd want to re-retrieve the data from the database or something along those lines, uh, or some more live content you would want to refresh. Because um, remember, when you receive a web page, it's not a constant connection open. You request the page, it comes to your server, or your computer, sorry, and then it would display the content there. It doesn't need to go and recheck the server at all. So unless you force a refresh, it will not recheck the server. And um, certain technologies, like if you're working with uh, um, banking or those sort of things, would have a more of a solid connection to open up with the server just to ensure security and all that kind of things. Anyway, so that's area one covered. I mean, you've got your meta tags and you've got your titles. There are other stuff with regards to linking to your cascading style sheets, but that will be done later. 
Um, for now, we're going to move on to our area two, and we're just going to add a couple of bits of content here. Now, so before we move on, these meta tags will not be displayed at all in the page. So if you take a look at the page and I refresh the page, nothing is displayed. So, area two. So the first thing we're going to work with, and you see I just get listed a whole bunch of different tags here, and I'm just going to first start creating by saying center, which means that whatever I put inside here is going to be aligned to the center. Um, and I'm going to put a heading one tag. So you see I've got a tag inside a tag. And I'll close it. So I've got a center tag, and inside the center tag I've got a heading one tag. And I'm going to say the word bacon. And you'll notice First of all, I make sure I saved it and went from being bold, the index.html, where my cursor is now, went from being bold to uh, text. Make sure you do save. If you go back and you go, oh, why is it not working? And remember, you need to refresh. To refresh, you press F5. Now, the big thing with F5, um, I want to give you another shortcut, and that is Control plus F5. Now, the reason why that is important is this does a force refresh. Now, force refresh, the reason why that is done Spell, is, is it ensures that it refreshes from the server. Now the big thing with the from the server um, is you have something called browser cache and you also have something called web cache and the cache server blah blah. Um, when you go to a website it will download the images and keep some of the images locally so that when you go to another page it uses the same image or something along those lines it doesn't have to re-download that image it will just use your local copy of that. Now, also with the with a web server, it's a, for a whole bunch of people on the network who are using that same internet connection, it would do something similar. So it might be retrieving a local copy of data. Now, if you press Control F5, it will ensure that it will ref take it from the server, so it will keep track of changes. The number of times I did edits for clients, and I told them that I'd done it, and they started shouting at me because I hadn't done it, and I'm like, press Control F5, and you have to tell that person seven times before they buy even more, and they never get it. Anyway, not the point. Uh, so we've got bacon there now, and bacon you'll see pops up in the center of the page, um, and it's as a heading. So H1 is just your heading tags, easy enough. Now, and your content you put in the middle. So for me, in this case, I just put bacon inside it. Uh, you can see I did it all on one line. It doesn't have to all be on one line. You can keep separate your items, um, your choice uh, on how to do that, like potentially you would want to do that to show that everything inside there will be centered and some people would even go as far as that. Um, I think this way sort of indicates more clearly where your open and close tags are so I'm going to leave it like that as though it is quite um, bulky. Um, I'm going to go through uh, your P components work the same um, I'm going to go through uh, the image component quickly. Now, your IMG component is a self-closing tag, meaning that it doesn't have an open and a close. So literally, I could just have that, and that is an image tag. But there are attributes that you have to have in here. Now, attributes, remember, are properties of that tag. And the properties that we need is we need to know where we're getting the data from. Now, this is one area where NetBeans does help you a lot. If you press Control Spacebar, now Control Spacebar is your friend. Don't forget about Control plus Space. Um, and when you start coding in Java, that is a massive shortcut. If you press Control Space, it will suggest items to you. And in this case, it's suggesting where do we want to get the source. So it picks up the folder location. And in there, you'll see there's my images folder. Now, what I forgot to do is actually download an image of bacon. Ooh, let's find bacon. Bacon. Um, I can't find pause button first. I think it's paused. Alrighty then. So um, you'll see there that when I press Control Space, it'll give me the locations, and it also 
one thing you'll notice that it does include the extension in here. So you've got to make sure that when you refer to the image, you've got to exclude the image. Is it a .jpg, .png? PNG has, uh, can have uh, transparent backgrounds, those kind of things. .gif, so forth. So you need to make sure that is included in there. So you're going to have a source. Now, another one you would put there is you put an alternative. So now, if the user has chosen not to have images or anything along those in the browser to speed up the is this connectivity, this is what would be displayed. And I'm going to say there, bacon. And you could also have something called title, and I'm just going to say there, bacon, which is this would put a uh, title, bacon. Um, just to show you uh, some information about that. So, um, if I wanted to also to have center out, I would have included it inside the center frame. So, let's go back and display this F5, and there we go, bam, a picture of bacon. I'm getting hungry now. Now, what you'll notice is that when I move my mouse over it, like I move it over there, you'll see the tooltip text, which I did just now, now it's not doing it. It says title bacon. So, the alternative alt attribute is the alternative text if the user chose not to download that image. But if it has downloaded that image and you put a mouse over, that is your title attribute. And now the attributes, uh, we go over more in the next section, and I'll, I will show you that. But these are the attributes that can be in there. There's other examples like width, height, blah, blah. I did go through a couple of the, your notes um, that are more generic attributes. Um, but generally speaking, in the cascading style sheet, that is where you, you would more commonly link those. So I'm not going to go too much into attributes. Um, but attributes are properties of your tags. So for example, I can even put here BG color, which is an attribute which would change the background color, and I could say I want it to be maroon. I don't even know how it's called maroon. Maybe I should just go with red. Um, and if you go back here, you'll see, bam, red background. Okay, so there's, there's various different attributes, and you can uh, look at W3 schools or any, um, any different sites. Uh, on the different attributes that are available, but uh, formatting I'm going to be doing in the cascading style sheet. But just to let you know that attributes are quite important, they're properties of the tag. But now, I don't like this page, I'm wanting to set up more of a structure around, so I'm going to use a table just to uh, go through a bit more advanced tags, as well as put a bullet list in there and stuff like that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create the table, and um, underneath the bacon I want a table. Uh, so I'm just going to go and start off by creating your table tag. Now your table tag, if you want more information about tables and how to code tables, you'll notice that, that in my YouTube channel there's a whole bunch of different uh, tutorials on, on Volvo. I used to also do layouts, um, and there's some table information on there. But the first thing you want to do when you create a table is I would suggest you open up a new X blank Excel document. And inside the Excel document, you can plan the way you want your table to look. So for example, I wanted to have the word uh, bacon at the top, and then I'd want over here on the left hand side for it to display the picture of the bacon underneath it I wanted to say uh, and then over here I would want to have a list for example um, of the various different components so I want to so I'd want to say dash fish, not fish bacon dash cheese dash mushrooms whatever just random things that are uh, for some reason I've got an equal there I don't want an equal ah, because it's got a negative sign in front of it it thinks that it should be a calculation go to self don't do that <laughs> okay that doesn't help me either whatever all right um so you would have various different contents in here so if I take a look at this uh, this information here put all the borders around Very cool. You'll notice that my table takes over three rows and three columns. So every single row needs to be able to attribute three uh, cells in it, and every there should be three rows. So when you're designing it, you're going to create three rows. So this, in this case, would be my first row, and then I'd be creating row two, row three. So now I know I've got three rows in my table. So now that we know we've got three rows in our table, we also know that every single row should have three cells in it. So if I take a look at this first row, I should have one, two, three cells in the first row, three cells in the second row, and three cells in the third row. Otherwise, it will not make sense. 
And that's how your Excel would have already started off. But now, if we go back to our Excel document, we notice that in the first row, the first cell is merged over three columns. So we do the same thing here as we say, we want this one to span over three columns. And that, that is quite a big thing. There. So um, let me, before I go and I do this, I want to show you step by step. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an attribute of border is equal to two. I'm also going to make, uh, which means I'm just going to show a border around it. Th that attribute border is equal to two will display for all the cells and the table. Whereas when you do it in cascading style sheets, if you say the table border is equal to two, it would actually just be or the width of the table, which would just be on the outside of the table. We'd have to specify the TDs more specifically on which you want to have um, the, the alternative measurements and whatnot, or the alternative row borders and rows and whatever. Um, types. Now, um, yes, and I'm also going to make a width of 300 and a height of 300 just so that I've got something that I can see. Yeah, so it's not liking me because it doesn't like me doing this stuff here inside the cascading style sheet. You will say the attribute table element is obsolete. You use CSS instead. And what you should be using cascading style sheet for, and we will be doing that later. But right now, um, just because we can, we're not going to. So you see, I've got a three by three uh, table over there. Now I'm wanting to change the constructs of it so that this is merged over all three columns. So what I'm going to do is in my top one, I'm going to say call span is equal to three. So the first cell is going to be merged over the three columns. Call span. That's not how you spell it. Span. Okay. Now when I'm doing a call span is equal to three, you'll notice that. And I just ran this without, as it's did. You'll notice here that it spans over three columns, but then it throws out the table. And the reason why is because technically now this row has three, four, five columns. We don't want five columns, we only want three. And that one cell takes over three columns. So it's no worries. Now we go into our next cell. So if I F5 this now, go uh, to self, save first, press F5. And <laughs> that happens more often than I can admit. Yeah, okay, so you'll see there that it's now been merged over there. And now we've got um, information here. Now, let's get this right. Uh, the next cell is just normal. But now this cell here, if we go across to our Excel file, this cell is normal. The next cell is merged over two columns and two rows. So in this one, we'll say call span is equal to two and row span to two. And now, here again, one cell, two cells. So sorry, one, two, three. So it's already taken up three, so we do not need that last one. Because then we've got three cells in here. We go to our web page and we press F5 and you'll see there now that this cell goes over two columns. But you'll notice there that it merges down with the bottom column. So now the bottom column actually has one, two, three, four, five cells in it. So we know we can actually already delete these two here. Why? Because they come, it comes from the top here, which spanned down into the bottom row. So that gets over here. So if I save this now and go back to my uh, web page, you'll see there that I've got the structure of the table that I designed. And I'm going to want to now, okay, so we've got the table structure. Now we want to actually put the contents within it. So the first thing we're wanting to do is inside the first cell, we want to actually put this central bacon inside there. So all I would do is I would take that central bacon and I'll place it inside my first cell. Um, and our shortcut, uh, I'm type it out at the bottom here as well, is Alt Shift F. Alt plus Shift plus F. That um, automatically tabulates. That's probably not the right word for it, but whatever. Um, Alt Shift Tab. So if I go back into here and I take this area and I go Alt Shift T, Alt Shift F. Hey, look at that. I'll shift F. And bam, it's automatically formatted to the correct format. It actually thinks it should be one lower. Let me just go Control A. I'll shift F. Okay, so it likes the tables being in there. Oh, yeah. Anyway, you'll see that it will format it to so that it, it more logically shows it around. It doesn't like the central tags, it doesn't recognize it. <laughs> okay, it works better in Java. Now I'll put redo on my tabbing glasses. Yeah, yeah. 
I'm, I'm not going to do that now. But uh, you'll see that, that the bacon is now centraled and it would be there. So if I now save this and I go back to my um, page, you'll see bacon has now come inside there. Now if I wanted the image to be put here, obviously it's going to be way too massive. So firstly I'm going to change my width and height of these things. And you can mess around with that. I'm not going to waste time with this on the video. So let me pause the video. Oh, hello, I've been successfully. <laughs> I didn't pause successfully. <laughs> Oops. All right. um, so you'll notice there that now the, 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 the image is slightly larger. Um, it's much bigger, the, 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 the table. And now I'm wanting to put the, the bacon inside here and whatever inside there. So you're just going to literally copy and paste it from inside there. The image is probably going to be way too large. So I'd suggest um, you would also put a width and height property into that image. And later we'll learn how to do that with. Uh, and that should be inside this TD here. And I would also add an attribute in here, width and height. So you see, you can just add attributes to two things to specify the width and the height. And as I said, I actually technically should just download an image that is more the correct size. And then you just have it with the percentage in it. Whoa, hello. Still created this thing quite insane. Because there's no contents in the other cells. In this cell here, that's why it's not putting anything in there. All right. Um, if I go to now my cell with this, I want to put it in a list here. So I'm just going to quickly show you how to work with the list. So remember, we go into the location where we want to place it. I'm going to do an unordered list, and I'm going to put in a whole bunch of different list items. So li, and then I'll just say uh, I want bacon, I want cheese. Now I want to sub points to this cheese. So let's say I've also got the mushrooms. Uh, mush. Rooms. I don't want sub points to this cheese, so I can create an order list with inside the unordered list. And in this order list, I'm going to go and I'm going to create the uh, cheese parmesan. Uh, inside parmesan, I'll create a cheddar. Copy and paste, by the way, if you want to know how to do that. Um, control C, Control V. Um, that's probably not how you spell cheddar. I'm probably not how you spell parmesan. Uh, <laughs> whatever. And then I'll have the. Uh, I really don't know many types of cheese. Okay, parmesan and cheddar. All right. Uh, if I save that now and I go back to my constructions here, press F5, you'll notice, bam, the bacon, cheese, parmesan, cheddar. It doesn't look pretty, and I'm, we're going to be looking at making it pretty with, um, and this is one way you can also lay out pages using tables, but we're going through other ways that divs and other constructs later. But to make it look pretty, we'll go into the cascading style sheet, which is the next section. But for now, I hope you've learned. I've rushed uh, bits and pieces, but you've got your notes as well, and you can rewatch this video. Um, I hope this has helped. Uh, Goodbye.